Usually when you watch surfing videos, it's just the highlights, the beautiful clips, but with this, you're going to get to see what it's actually like to surf as a beginner, including why it's fun and why it kind of sucks. For example, it's way more set up than you would think. First thing you have to do is grab your board, and we live in a one bedroom apartment, and there's not a lot of room for a surfboard, so I leave my surfboard out on the balcony. The first board I got was a fiberglass board, which I was later told I have to completely scrape off all the wax and put on a base coat of wax plus another coat of wax on top of that. So if you're a beginner, I recommend just getting a foam board. It's not as cool, but it's a lot easier to start with. Now, if you live close to the beach, you can just take your surfboard and walk to the beach. And even though we live pretty close to the beach, we still need to drive to get good waves. And driving with a surfboard takes some setup. If you have roof racks, it's gonna make it a lot easier, or you can buy foam roof racks, but this takes a little bit of setup. And before you go, make sure to bring a wetsuit because it's gonna be cold. And you're also gonna wanna bring a towel because you're gonna get wet. Now, usually if I'm surfing, I'm gonna go to a beach pretty close to me. But for this day, the beaches close to me didn't have any waves. So we ended up having to drive to Malibu to meet up with some of Ariana's friends to go surfing, which is another thing to keep in mind that the ocean is unpredictable. Once you find a parking spot, which can be difficult at good beaches, the next step is to put on your wetsuit, unstrap your board from the roof, and walk to the beach. And finally, you're ready to start surfing. Which leads me to the first con of surfing a lot of people don't talk about, is that it takes a lot of setup. It takes 30 to 45 minutes worth of setup before you even get to the beach and you're ready to start surfing. But let me back up here. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Travis, and I grew up in Southern California, but I've spent most of my adult life working, trying to build a business so that I could create passive income, so I could get freedom to live my dream life. And I would tell myself that one day I'll be successful enough and I'll be making enough money that I could just spend my time learning to surf and just enjoying life, which is crazy because obviously you don't need a lot of money to learn how to surf. But after recently selling my business for a good chunk of change, I realized that now is the time to start. So I started working with Angie from Learn to Surf LA and she taught me the basics. So the front of the board is called the nose. The back of the board is called the tail. On the side, those are the rails. And when you pop up, you want your back foot to be here and your front foot's gonna be about the middle of the board, similar to like a defensive stance when you stand up. So you'll lay down on your board. You want your toes all the way to the tail. And so it's obviously a lot different when you're in the water because the ground's moving underneath you, but this is a good place to practice. So you're gonna paddle, you'll paddle for the wave and you'll be able to sort of see it out of the periphery when the wave is coming. So you'll paddle, 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 you can even look over your shoulder. I'll say hands, your hands go right under your shoulders. Do you do any yoga? Yeah. All right, so you're familiar with um, cobra yeah. and up dog? All right, so I'll say hands, hands come down and then you're gonna press up to your knees. We might have you take a couple waves on your knees first just to kind of get the balance of the board. You'll sit your butt back a little bit more. You can even play with lifting your hands up. Okay. That helps to sort of like um, fire up those stabilizer muscles in your core so that when you're standing all the way up, they're already warmed up. All right, so from hands and knees, there's two ways depending on you know where you're at today. Front foot will come up, yeah, right under your chest, and then you stay low and pivot onto the back foot. Right, and then you wanna keep your center of gravity low, so bend your knees a lot. Your butt can go back. If I say grab the rail, your back hand will come down to the rail. Your front arm will be up. All right, so paddle, 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 hands, knees, up, stay low. So if you're all the way down here, paddle, 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 hands, knees, and then you can pop straight up to your feet. Yeah. And so I guess I just popped up fine, but say you popped up a little bit too far forward. You can always hop back. When you fall off your board, especially here because it can be really shallow, don't jump off. Oh, okay. It's going to hurt your ankles, your knees, maybe something worse. See if you can try to fall backwards or do like the tuck and roll. Okay. Paddle, 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 hands, knees, up. Nice. And we went out surfing and let's just say it's a lot harder than it looks. But as with any skill, it's about getting back up, doing the reps, and practicing. So that brings us back to where we left off in our journey to go surfing with Ariana and her friends. But one thing I wanna stress is that it's currently winter in LA. Despite how beautiful it looks outside, the water is still cold. Though the wetsuit helps a lot. Your first walking out can be really hard to get out to where you can actually catch the waves because you're constantly getting battered by waves. But luckily today, the waves are tiny, which is a good thing because it's Ariana's first time surfing. And usually as soon as a big wave passes, you wanna get on your board and start paddling so you can get over the next wave. 
And as soon as I get out there, I see my friends about to catch a wave, but to be honest, we're all beginners, so it ends up not going as planned. After a few minutes of waiting, I see a wave and I start paddling and I end up catching it for a second or two before crashing. And one thing that a lot of people won't tell you about surfing is that it's a lot of waiting around for that perfect wave, especially when you're a beginner and you can't read the waves as well. That's why I recommend if you're a beginner surfer to go out surfing with a friend because if nothing else, you get to spend time in nature just having a conversation with a friend while you wait for the perfect wave. But eventually I see a wave that has potential and I start paddling and I stand up and the board slips out from underneath me. So I end up asking my friend, Do you guys have wax in your, yeah. in your bag? I'm gonna go grab it. And I get out of the ocean and I go to wax my board. Now warning, wax is usually used for fiberglass boards and professional surfers make fun of people that use wax on foam boards, but it does help, especially if you have a newer foam board. So I put on some wax and I paddle back out there to meet up with my friends and try again. And after a lot more waiting and there's still not being any good waves, I give the camera over to Ariana to see if she can get on camera me catching a wave, but mostly she just gets footage of me waiting around. Eventually I do see a wave and go for it and fail. After a few more minutes, my friends decide to get out of the ocean because it's just too cold, but I decide to stay a little bit longer to see if I can catch the perfect wave. And after about 10 minutes of waiting around, I finally see a wave that has some potential and I go for it and I catch it. And it's the best wave I've caught all day, even though it's a pretty short ride. And that is another con with surfing. You don't have control over the waves. Also, once you're done, you have to do everything in reverse. Walk back out to your car, strap up your board, take off your wetsuit, which is a lot harder than it looks. Drive home, take everything off and out of your car, up to your apartment. Then you get to do what is probably the most fun part as a beginner, take a hot shower. Make sure to wash your wetsuit too, so it doesn't get ruined from the salt water. And I just wanna point out, there is a lot of cons to surfing when you're starting as a beginner. The setup is a little overwhelming at first, but it gets easier every time you do it and it becomes a routine. And even though surfing as a beginner is actually really hard, it's really fun to learn a new skill. And as humans, our brains love a good challenge. And yes, the water is extremely cold, but it's also kind of invigorating. And there's something about having to deal with the cold that just revitalizes you. And yes, it's a lot of waiting, which is something I didn't realize when I would look at surf highlights, but it really teaches you to have patience and it really teaches you to enjoy the moment. And it gives me time just to enjoy nature and enjoy my time with my friends. And ultimately, even though it can be a little bit daunting at first, Surfing is just a fun experience. And I realized we build things up in our head. We focus on the negatives and we put things off because we think they're gonna be so much work. But most things in life are easier to do than we think. And oftentimes the negative things in life are actually what make the positives so much fun. And I'm in the process of moving to Mexico. That's why we have so many boxes here to do a 30 day surf challenge. And I'll also be posting the results of that 30 day surf challenge soon. But if you're curious how I started and built my e-commerce business, which was the permission slip I needed to start living my dream life, you can check out this video I did right here where I talk about how I started and grew a million dollar Amazon FBA business. And I talk about step-by-step step how you can create your own online business to create passive income so you can get your freedom and live the life of your dream. So click on that video so you can see how I created my business and how you can create your own business. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.